Hello friends, this is a 6 years old cow. So this cow 15 days back presented with the history of brisket edema and the jugular engorgement. 15 days back uh, we performed the rumnotomy and we removed the potential foreign body which is the major cause for the traumatic pericarditis and also drain the about 1 liter of pericardial fluid from the left side. But when this animal presented today, so owner told that the brisket edema increases on the last few days. So as far as the feed intake, water intake of this animal is concerned, so feed intake is not up to the mark, only taking uh, a little bit feed and fodder in a whole day and also taking a uh, little water. Animal is also not ruminating properly and the, if you see the brisket edema, so only concern is that brisket edema increases a lot. So we plan to scan the this thoracic area from the right side. So if you see the transducer at the fifth intercostal space from the right side and if you see, so you will find there is an anechoic image at the top of the, this fan shaped diagram. So this is nothing, this is the free flow around the heart and you could see the moving heart wall. Today we will also go for the pericardial synthesis. So we put the antibiotic uh, in the pericardial space as well as the parental antibiotic. So recovery is depends on the, the amount of aspirated fluid. So this recurrence so that either the amount has been not completely removed for the first time or there is a recurrence of the. You could see there is a clear cut fluid which is moving and there is a fibrin also present in this fluid. Even you could see the fibrin deposit on the wall of the heart. So definitely the ultrasonography helps in the diagnosis of this traumatic pericarditis. So we have just scanned the, this right thoracic area and we found that uh, there was a huge amount of pericardial fluid around the heart. So we have decided that we drain the, this pericardial fluid once again and then we see that this uh, progress of the, this case. So for the pericardiosynthesis there are different methods. One is the by the needle aspiration or just by pricking the 16 gauge needle or 14 gauge needle uh, through the fifth intercostal space. But I do not choose that method. I used to drain the this pericardial fluid by inserting the trocar and cannula. So for that uh, we choose this here the fifth intercostal space and from the fifth intercostal space we first desensitize with the 2% lignocaine hydrochloride solution and then we make an incision at that particular site and then we insert the trocar and cannula. So once the fluid started coming and then we remove the trocar and leave the cannula as such and through cannula we wait for the removal of the maximum amount of the pericardial fluid. After that we insert the rial fitting tube and fix it with the chest wall and then we administer the antibiotic solution from that tube also and then we see whether the fluid is further coming through the tube or not. If the fluid doesn't come through the that tube, so we remove the tube after three days. So this is the fifth intercostal space. So we desensitize this area. So this is how we can first just infiltrate the two percent lignocaine solution subcutaneously. After subcutaneous infiltration, we also infiltrate a few ml into the intercostal space as I am doing here. I could see here because ultimately uh, we have to insert the trocar and cannula through the, this intercostal space. So this space is also need to be desensitized. So about 10 ml of the lignocaine solution I have inserted from the, this area. So next step we uh, scrub this area one or two times and then make the skin incision here and then insert the togar and cannula. So we make a inc skin incision here. This much is sufficient to insert the trocar and cannula. So now we insert the, this trocar and cannula. So we slowly and slowly pass. Now you could see it is going very easy. We 
we should not. So now you could see it has gone inside the thoracic cavity. So the moment I remove the this trocar, the fluid will start coming to this one. So now you could see the flow of the, this pericardial fluid. So now you could see there is a foam also, a smell. So this is how uh, we can drain. So whenever you drain through this, so almost the whole pericardial fluid drain. Otherwise, with the needle, only a few ml or you can say a very little amount come through the needle. So this is the technique and this is the method how I used to drain the, this pericardial fluid. So now we are going to scan during the procedure. So now you could see the earlier this wall was up to here and the fluid was too much. But now you could see there is a decrease in the column of the, this fluid. So this is clear cut indication that the level of the fluid is decreasing. Now the most of the uh, pericardial fluid has been removed. So now the problem with the trocar and cannula, whenever you remove the pericardial fluid through the needle or the trocar. So what happened? The fluid above the, this cannula only you can say drain passively. The once the level you can say gone below the, this so there is a difficulty in the drainage so as you could see here so there is a whenever there is a heart is beating so because of the, that uh, movement so when the fluid when comes up so that fluid you can say coming so for the complete evacuation so we insert the any uh, catheter so i used to insert this rails fitting tube this is the 18 uh, gauge so we insert through the, this cannula and then we remove the this cannula part so now you could see the how the fluid is now coming so you can insert this one so what happened this tube is so this tube gone up to the you can say bottom of the this pericardium or the thorax so whatever the fluid it will come now what we do so this because of the this so when you want to remove through the this tube so obviously because of the this it will won't come outside so what we do we just cut from here and then we remove so i put the here the persisting suture so that uh, the this catheter won't i can say come outside and also apply the chinese finger trap and then I leave this catheter minimum for the three days and during the three we insert the antibiotic through the this tube and once the if there is no fluid through the this catheter so definitely we will remove after two to three days.